All right, look, we'll get to the story about the horny old man leaking government secrets to someone who claims to be a woman that he met on a dating site. But first, we have to get to this Trump Supreme Court news because, yeah, it's, it's obviously important. Now, sometimes it does suck being right all the time. A few days ago, in an offhand comment that wasn't even the focus of an in-depth article, we mentioned that the Supreme Court was going to take a look-see at the state of Colorado's attempt to remove Donald Trump from the ballot for president. And our reaction was just, oh, well, they're just going to side with Trump because he filled the court with his people. And that's pretty much exactly what happened, ending one of the shortest and most predictable political dramas of, well, this week, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people were acting shocked, and I was like... Who, did who didn't see this coming? Yeah, I'm like, did you just fall out of a coconut tree? No. Or do you exist within the context of you and everything that came before you? So we should probably clarify this a little bit, because the decision was unanimous. Yeah. And while it does keep Trump on the ballot, there are a few important things to point out regarding the details of the decision. Starting with the fact that it focused specifically on how the 14th Amendment should be interpreted when it comes to a state's control over national elections. Basically, that Congress has to enforce the amendment, which essentially states that anyone involved in an insurrection should be disqualified from holding public office. Congress has to decide if Trump participated in an insurrection, and if that ever happened, unlikely, yeah. then he wouldn't be allowed to run for president. The Supreme Court said that the state of Colorado cannot make that decision, which of course muddies the waters even further when you get into the whole states' rights arguments regarding this and a lot of their other recent verdicts. Yeah, they seem to be pretty particular about what uh, states can and can't allow to happen. Uh, yeah, it's a fun country. We're still figuring this thing out. Yeah. Uh, good news, though. Uh, CVS and I believe Walgreens are going to start stocking the uh, uh, abortion pill. You still need a prescription, obviously, oh. but uh, that's that's a, a step in the right direction All for right. states that will allow it. I mean, they are, you know, that's the one good thing about these uh, national pharmacy chains being just on the verge of bankruptcy constantly is yeah. they, they have to innovate. They have to give the people what they want. The mm -hmm. people want abortions. That's, <laughs> that's what they do. They do want abortions, everyone. But also, uh, unfortunately for everyone, the fact that Colorado even tried to remove Trump from the ballot only for it to be overturned, will be viewed as a win for Trump by Trump himself and members of his party and also make him appear even more untouchable, despite nothing having changed since the day before Colorado tried to remove him from the ballot. And this will undoubtedly be used as marketing for his campaign and further proof that there's some kind of deep state plot against him, despite people trying to do whatever they can to stop a fascist dictator from being elected. And I want to point out, personal opinion, but I, I am aware that calling someone a fascist dictator sounds goofy and lame. But Trump's most loyal supporters, they literally love him specifically for the fascist stuff that he wants to do. Yeah, and they've laid this out like exactly what they plan on doing. And it's, yeah, uh, yeah we'll just remove everyone from the government who is at all critical of anything we might do. Even people on the street, though, in most interviews with Trump supporters... They really only talk about giving Trump unchecked power to do whatever he wants, punishing other people, and getting rid of undesirables. Instead of, I don't know, making comments on things like monetary policy or something, it's just the fashy stuff that they seem to be interested in. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think any of these people, if you ask them what their thoughts on, you know, economics they'd have a whole lot to say. Uh, well, the, the only time that Trump supporters do talk about stuff like monetary policy is when they cry about paying for $15 orange juice sent directly to their room at a hotel, or, or uh, most recently on yeah. Twitter, an $18 cookie. Yeah. I mean, that's on you. That's, that's a you problem, buddy. It, they, they also, they, they love going to uh, airports and taking pictures of uh, the prices of goods yeah. and being like, holy shit. Well, Have you seen this? Not even the prices of goods, but like their receipt where it's like, can you believe I paid $85 for a salad? And it's like one salad, uh, a cup of water and four whiskey Cokes. Yeah. <laughs> of a shot of blue label. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? Um, that $18 cookie though, um, that is a you problem. Yeah. No one made you buy the cookie. You know, inflation has been bad the past few years, but it's not $18 for a cookie bad. You're just getting ripped off. Yeah. Anyways, Trump is still facing numerous charges across multiple court cases, and the Supreme Court still has a case lined up for later next month on the subject of whether or not Donald Trump is immune from criminal prosecution. Oh, good. Yeah. Which, yeah, you would assume would not go in his favor, but... I mean, this one seems pretty cut and dry because of the implications for the rest of time. I just don't 
you know, make predictions anymore. Yeah. We were right about the state's elections ruling. I hope we're right that they don't grant him blanket <laughs> immunity yeah, because, be. um, yeah, I mean, if they were trying to prevent chaos with the whole 14th Amendment thing, I think everyone understands how chaotic things can and will potentially get if the Supreme Court decides that presidents are completely immune from criminal prosecution. Yeah. Seems- I don't think we want to go there. Which is why it appears as though the court was unanimous on this ruling. A few outlets are claiming that since the ruling was always going to go this way, better for the court to at least appear in lockstep in the lead up to a decision on Trump's immunity. Yeah, so they're like, okay, this is an easy one for us. Uh, No, Colorado can't take the president off a national election ballot. Uh, Hopefully that means, by the way, he's also not immune. So, you know. you, You can't say that. Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan are they just they just hate Donald Trump and they want to take him down any way they can mm-hmm. when they you know they gave this one to him. But uh, that is typical of Democrats though, always giving a little bit and then uh, when it comes time to get something in return, just completely laying they down. They do not understand even the basics of negotiation. It so is, we'll see. I it mean, is baffling. Uh, uh, so yeah, obviously not calling the immunity case a slam dunk, but it would be shocking if it went in Trump's favor. Though, you know, these days I'm shocked quite often. <laughs> yes. and we live in a world of clowns. Mm-hmm. The clown car that we are all riding in, there's no brakes on this clown car. And, it's full, and it is full of clowns. Full more, of other clowns. More clowns than could you could possibly imagine could fit in this clown car. You open the door, they just keep getting out. Everyone's they're shocked. Like that. The audience. You see the clowns coming out, you're like, okay, there couldn't possibly be any more clowns in this clown car. And then there's just more clowns. <laughs> Each one clownier than the last. I feel like that's how France looks at us. France, who just put uh, abortion access into their constitution. Yeah. I mean, fair. Yeah. But yeah, before we leave Trump behind for this episode, though, there were countless moments over the weekend during speeches where Trump made no sense. He trailed off or seemed to just glitch out. And we're not going to go over every single one, but here's one of the craziest clips where he makes an exciting new sound. Brand new sound just dropped in the middle of a speech. I heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will repeat your... Oh. Uh, okay. I, I love that neither of the two people, one of whom will definitely be the next president, ha- looks as if they will even live to the end of their term. It does seem like, it, doesn't it seem like, speaking of falling out of a coconut tree, doesn't it seem like they're testing Kamala Harris to potentially step in? Because uh, yeah. she just came out well, sort of in support of a ceasefire, no, but not entirely. No, they tried to pull a fast one on yeah. us. She's like, that's why we need a ceasefire now. For six For weeks, a couple of weeks. So, yeah, it's yeah. like literally just rephrasing what the yes. official Biden White House policy. But they got on that it. sound clip, yeah. which they think will work. It's been their policy for a while. They have shown no interest in actually, you know, acting upon it, enforcing it. But uh, yeah, that was interesting. They're like, wow, Kamala's calling for a ceasefire. Cool, young Kamala. <laughs> Can I see the extended version of this clip, please? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Uh, also, just for reference, in case someone watching hasn't seen the now infamous clip of falling out of a coconut tree. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should should definitely show that at least once every couple of weeks. Here you go. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? (laughs) You exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. Yeah, that that was like last summer, and it just pops up every couple weeks now, and yeah. it is it is truly uh, one of my favorite clips. It's amazing because it's like, it's totally her delivery. Yeah, because like what she's saying is it actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> when, when, the longer you think about it, the more sense it makes. It is a it is a somewhat coherent statement. Yeah, but the way it's delivered is she just sounds insane. Yeah, it sounds anything. like the conversation you would have in one of the uh, at one of those backyard plastic picnic tables after yeah. smoking five bowls. Yeah, she. Kamala is like your, she's like your boss and uh, you're trying to be cool. You're hanging out at the bar after work and she gets a little loopy. (laughs) Yeah. Usually she, you know, keeps it nice and calm, but yeah, uh, we're cutting loose on Friday. Yeah. Kamala can't hold her liquor. (laughs) No. But moving on, we have two stories about dudes leaking. Leaking top secret information. Uh, thanks for the extended yeah. version of that <laughs> sentence. Leaky dudes. Dudes leaking top secret information in order to impress people. And uh, we'll do the update on um, Jack Texera first. And you'll remember him as the Air National Guardsman who leaked a trove of classified documents to people on a Discord server. Teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids. You want to see something cool? He wanted to, he did it to make himself look badass in yeah. front of a bunch of fellow gamers, literal children. Mm-hmm. Those documents, which were related to the war in Ukraine, were almost immediately leaked onto the greater internet. 
popping up in places like 4chan and eventually social media. The documents were at some point altered to make Russia look better, and then they were re-leaked online. Yeah, they it like was, altered the uh, casualty numbers on both sides. Like, wow, I can't believe the, the United States leaked this. Thing. I mean, that's very clever on Russia's part or whoever <laughs> sure, did it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a gigantic, totally preventable mess that only happened because some dude, barely old enough to drink, was clout chasing in a Discord server called Thug Shaker Squad. Yep. Anyways, Jack Texera signed a plea agreement admitting that he was guilty on all counts, and he has been sentenced to 16 years in prison. I hope the clout was worth it, jackass. Ugh. Here's ABC News. Massachusetts Air National Guardsman Jack Texera agreed Monday that he caused one of the most extraordinary leaks of national defense secrets in years and agreed to accept a prison sentence of 16 years, what could be the longest sentence in an unlawful retention case. According to the signed plea agreement filed with the court, Texera, 22, agreed to plead guilty to all six counts charging him with willful retention and transmission of national defense information. In exchange, prosecutors agreed not to charge him with additional counts under the Espionage Act. Texera accessed and printed hundreds of classified documents and posted images of them on Discord prior to his arrest last April, a prosecutor said Monday during a hearing in Boston Federal Court where the Air National Guardsman pleaded guilty. Wait, he printed them? Like, did he print them at work and, and then, then like, took like, them home and scanned them or took pictures of them? What a weirdo. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, well, that, that way it makes them look cooler. They got that... Uh, you know, that vibe where it's like, these are copy and paste. Yeah, or, he probably or, went down to the local, like, print shop. He's like, can I get a custom, like, top secret stamp? And can you smear so it I a can, little bit when you yeah. do the copy? Can I get some folders, and I can stamp the folders, and top I secret. can be like, hey, check this out. Uh -huh. And I can keep it in a box in my bathroom. By the way, my friends on the Discord server said they would never, never share this one with anyone else. I told them it was okay to tell people that a really cool guy had shown them something yeah. that was totally top secret, but they couldn't actually send them those files. Yeah, that would violate gamer code. Yes, which is obviously way more important than any of our federal laws. Yeah, it's a higher oath than anyone in this country takes. Yeah, and he... Because gamers are troops. And those fellow gamers, they let, they let this brave soldier down. They broke the gamer code. <laughs> they did. But not to be outdone by this news, another person working with the U.S. military has been exposed for leaking classified information, again, relating to the war in Ukraine. And this time, instead of cl chasing clout, he was chasing the ladies. <whistles> chasing tail. Yeah. Uh, an Air Force employee has now been charged with leaking stuff to women on a dating website. Uh, and one of the conversations that made its way on online, it really, really seems as though he was getting catfished by a federal agent. Or a foreign spy. Yeah, either that or someone literally working for the Kremlin. Yes. I mean, this is it's some of the most blatant, <coughs> like, if you read this, con and the weird part is, like, when you go into the indictment, like, you can see the conversation, so they, they show a one-sided conversation, it's the, yeah. it's the, the supposed woman talking to him, and it's like, if you saw these messages... No, and this guy's older. We'll get to it. But if you saw these messages, you'd be like, something is up here. No, yeah, but there is, this is a textbook romance scam. Yeah. In the indictment, time passes between him sending two separate uh, bits of information. So he, like, had time to think about it. Like, a month in between being yeah. like, huh, should I keep doing this? Yes. Yes, I should. Because, goddamn, that AI-generated pussy goes wild. Yeah. I checked the bio, there was a link, and now I'm communicating directly with the Kremlin. In fact, there are, in fact, hot, sexy women in your area if you are in possession of top secret documents. Yeah. Uh, so first, here's the story from Reuters, and then we'll read the dating app conversation. Think of it as an episode of Leaky Text Theater. You're welcome, everyone. Okay. A civilian U.S. Air Force employee has been charged with disclosing classified defense information to a woman he met on a foreign online dating platform, the Justice Department said on Monday. Wait, it's a, <laughs> it a foreign dating platform? What, what the I, fuck? I, I believe... Is this like a sugar daddy? Yes, like, it, uh, it, it, they, they talk about how this... I believe they indicate that this woman uh, claimed to be Ukrainian. This is like a mail order bride. She's like, I just want to make sure that I'm safe, so give me all these... All this yeah. information about... If it was a Russian woman, I never would have given her the documents, of Ukraine. course. But it's Ukraine. We're, we're and friends. clearly this guy uh, honors the sovereignty of Ukraine. I, I have to imagine... By knowing the difference. There's got to be so many... First of all, there are so many dudes that are like, hell yeah, Ukraine is uh, in its time of war, and there's so many sexy young Ukrainian women fleeing the country, uh -huh. uh, looking for husbands, and there's got to be just a whole industry of websites uh, capitalizing that on that in order to scam these horny men. Yes. That's crazy. Ukrainian woman in bio. 
David Franklin Slater, 63, was taken into custody in Nebraska on Friday on a three-count federal indictment. He was expected to make an initial court appearance on Tuesday. The indictment accuses Slater of giving classified material by email and online messages about the Russia-Ukraine war to someone claiming to be a woman living in Ukraine. Slater, who retired as a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army before joining the Air Force as a civilian employee, was assigned to a U.S. Strategic Command at Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, the Justice Department said. If he is convicted at trial, Slater faces up to 10 years in federal prison on each of the three counts in the indictment. Which is somehow less than Jack Texera. Yeah, and I think this is, like, worse. I don't know. They're pro- Potentially. I guess, I guess they're the same, but, like, yeah, this could have gone way worse. Although, I don't know. I, I don't know. what What's yeah. worse, getting clout from fellow gamers or getting non-existent pussy? The funniest possible uh, way this works out is that it wasn't a spy or an FBI agent. It was someone just trying to catfish him for like, uh, you know, Visa gift cards and just being like, this. what, is, what the fuck is this for? Well, yeah. I guess that's like, his kink. Oh yeah, please send me more of yeah. whatever the fuck this is. Defense, okay. Okay, defense daddy, send me yeah. more top Just like not stuff. interested in it at all. Okay, whatever. The funniest possible scenario is this is an actual real woman who was in love with him. <laughs> and he was just intercepted by the A real Ukrainian woman. Who, who only survived because of the tips that yeah. uh, this person was giving them. Well, I guess we'll see. In the trial. Yeah. Um. Anyway, here's the messages between this guy and someone on a dating site. And all of these appear to be from the love interest, whom this retired Army Lieutenant Colonel and Air Force employee thought was real. Around March 11th, 2022. Dear, what is shown on the screens in this special room? It is very interesting. (laughs) Uh, Around the 15th. By the way, you were the first to tell me that NATO members are traveling by train and only now, already evening, this was announced on our local news. You are my secret informant love. How were your meetings? Successfully? (laughs) Jesus Christ. Around March 18th. Beloved Dave, do NATO and Biden have a secret plan to help us? Around March 23rd. Dave, it's great that you get information about specified country one. First, I hope you will tell me right away. You are my secret agent with love. (laughs) Around April 12th, sweet Dave, the supply of weapons is completely classified, which is great. (laughs) Around April 14th, my sweet Dave, thanks for the valuable information. It's great that two officials from the USA are going to Kiev. (laughs) Jesus. Uh, Around April 19th, Dave, I hope tomorrow NATO will prepare a very unpleasant surprise for Putin. Will you tell me? Around April 21st. You have a job in the operations center today, I remember. I'm sure there is a lot of interesting news there. Yeah, no, this sounds like a fucking spy. Yeah. (laughs) Well, not even a good spy. Yeah. Oh, Dave. I can't believe Dave, a retired lieutenant colonel, would fall for this. Yeah, this is uh, pretty egregious. (laughs) I'm her her special agent, and she loves me. Yeah. Not, they, I mean... He probably hasn't taken a fucking infosec like seminar in like forty years. Definitely, things were different. Definitely back then. types everything with his index fingers. Yeah, yeah. Here's the information about <laughs> what we're doing in uh, Kiev. So the indictment takes over at this point. It reads as follows: In response to these requests, David Franklin Slater indeed provided classified national defense information (NDI) to co-conspirator one, the alleged woman. <laughs> alleged woman. <laughs> For example, on or about March 28th, 2022, he transmitted classified NDI regarding military targets in Russia's war against Ukraine. And on April 13th, 2022, he transmitted classified NDI regarding Russian military capabilities relating to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So apparently this country is only as strong as its horniest old men and its clout chasingest young men. And those... Those two types of guy are always in possession of top secret classified information. Jordan Peterson was right. The government (laughs) should be giving single men girlfriends (laughs) and wives to prevent this kind of thing. If we'd followed Jordan Peterson's advice, (laughs) this country would be safer. You say that, but the fact that this guy fell for someone who talks like that could easily have a fully AI girlfriend and be completely happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, give this man an AI girlfriend to spill all the secrets he wants. Yeah, and just it just goes into like an encrypted vault and gets deleted. And it's just like, uh, it's fine. And this guy thinks that he's having a full-fledged relationship. Be like, oh, well, no, I can't 
come meet you in person. I'm involved in, in there's a war happening in Here's my country. Here's a question. Do we know for a fact that this man was single or is single? I don't know. I think that's the least of his worries at no, this point. <laughs> that, that would be an extra cherry on top because like, what if he is like he's been married for like decades and this was a little thing he was doing on the side? I, again, I think that's probably the least of his worries right now, but I'm sure that it is... Uh, it would make it extra embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, give everyone with top secret crowns an AI, an AI girlfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only thing we can do. Yeah. Anyways, uh, not sure how long the country's going to last with uh, all of our... We got top secret information in the hands of Donald Trump, who keeps it in a bathroom. We got it in uh, a, a fucking certified gooner's house. We got it in a guy who just wants clout from his gamer friends. Everyone has access to it. It's We're fine. all leaking. Yeah. Nation of leakers. That's right. Oh, anyways. anyways, we got to take a quick break to thank today's sponsor. And luckily, this isn't top secret classified information because Henson Shaving <laughs> wants you to have a clean, beautiful face for a fraction of the cost of normal shavers and with a shaver that doesn't destroy the environment. That's right. They're not hiding this information. No, they want public. you to know. Exactly. Henson they're, Shaving they're is a, having <laughs> us tell you about this information. Henson Shaving is a family owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover. And now, they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. What's that? Dave, tell me more about the Henson Shaving Razor. <laughs> okay. Dave, you're my secret agent. All right, babe. <laughs> razor blades are like diving boards. The long... <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> I hear you guys are doing an ad read today. Can you tell me about the Henson <laughs> Shaver? <laughs> razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble. The more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave isn't a blade problem. It's an extension problem. By using aerospace grade CNC machines, <laughs> Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. Mm -hmm. That is military precision. That's right. And we're telling you all about it. Uh -huh. That is a secure and stable blade with a vibration free shave. But wait, it gets better. The razor has built in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. The Henson Razor works with standard, dual-edge blades to give you that old-school shave with the benefits of new-school tech. Once you own a Henson Razor, it's only about 3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. Honestly, we love this razor, uh, mainly because it's infinitely reusable, it gets the job done extremely well, and you are not contributing to more plastic pollution in the process. Also, it feels firm. It's got a nice weight to it. It's ridiculously cheap to refill over time. Plus, it's always fun to reject modernity and embrace tradition. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Visit hensonshaving.com slash ITDaily to pick the razor for you and use code ITDaily and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash ITDaily and use code ITDaily. Check them out if you're looking for a good shave. Supporting our sponsors means supporting this show. Thank you. All right, back to the news now with some truly bizarre stuff that happened recently, including a bunch of people um, just really taunting history by asking it to repeat itself by getting themselves stranded in Donner Pass during an epic snowstorm. Hmm. Huh, why is that pass named Donner Pass? Where have I heard that word Donner? Is it named after director Richard Donner? Maybe. Because, uh, wow. I thought it was named after the delicious Donner kebab. Yeah, mm, I'm getting hungry right now. <laughs> Head up to Donner Pass. So we'll get to it in a second, but first. <laughs> getting hungry talking about <laughs> Donner Pass. Mm. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> we're eating good. Uh, but yeah, first, let's check out this recruitment ad that a police department is already being forced to apologize for. Yeah. The ad in question is for the Peoria Police Department and features officers holding guns and wearing tactical gear with the slogan, Stop Playing Games and Answer the Call of Duty. Hashtag join Peoria Police Department. And I'm sure we don't have to tell you why this ad is dystopian as hell while also having an implied call for violence considering the way it is presented and the audience that they're attempting to pander to. Stop mindlessly mowing down enemy combatants in that silly video game and come do it for real. Hey, you know that game you play where the goal is to kill as many people as possible in the shortest amount of time? You want to do that in real life? Join the Peoria Police Department. Yeah. 
a town of, as is ex- explained, uh, it's not very big. It's not a very yeah. large city. Uh, no, Can I come, call in a nuke? <laughs> <laughs> yes, tactical nuke coming in. Uh, come do it for real. Because the Peoria Police Department, they have enough weapons to wage a war on the local populace while also having qualified immunity, which allows them to basically do whatever the fuck they want. Are you a bad enough gamer to pick up a real weapon and point it at your neighbor for petty crimes? Hell yeah. No. We believe in the gamer code here at the Peoria Police Department. That's right. No leaks, though. So obviously this did not go over well because it's fucking insane for a bunch of reasons. But mainly marketing the police department as a paramilitary force with nonstop action that will hire almost anyone regardless of education or experience, not great. With more on the response and the apology, here's gaming outlet Kotaku. (laughs) The post immediately garnered a deluge of negative responses online. It was shared on the Peoria, Illinois subreddit and on Facebook by citizens of the central Illinois city, which has a population of more than 100,000 people. I can't believe they actually had most likely multiple people look at this and say that's what we need to drum up recruits, wrote one Redditor. On February 28th, Police Chief Eric Echeverria apologized in a statement to the Peoria Journal Star, saying... It was never my intention to offend any of our community members with the recruitment flyer that was posted on our Facebook page yesterday. It was simply a recruitment image I thought would appeal and connect to a younger generation. I take ownership of this, and I sincerely apologize. Our goal is to recruit the best and most qualified officers for this police department in the most caring and respectful way. By literally... (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. You can teabag your enemies. Yeah. Uh, also, just like the image of recruiting people for the police department. It's, it's not like to serve and protect. It's literally people with guns. Th- yeah. Specifically three white guys with guns pointed at whoever's reading the flyer. Yeah. With, with helmets and fucking like extra magazines and uh, are like uh, protective vests and everything else on. I mean, I dare say that, you know, it would take... It would take a complete overhaul of everything, but uh, you'd probably have fewer recruitment problems if you didn't present, if American police didn't, weren't something that to a lot of average people is just a death squad. Completely alienating. Yeah. And like, in order for the police to be less shitty, you need people that aren't signing up yeah. so they have a fucking license to kill. But also, marketing it as, as like, uh, uh, hey, you wanna do this? You, you could die. This this is how we have to get suited up for situations. Like, yeah. This is life or death constantly. Yeah, you're you're already you're putting people on edge. You're marketing to sociopaths. Yes. Like the, the that's who you're trying to get with the fucking Call of Duty ad. The job of a police department is like ninety percent just like pushing paper, a- pushing paper, answering Writing phone tickets. calls, dealing with bullshit. Um, so if you recruit someone who thinks that they're gonna get to you know, fire off rounds all the time, well, that person is more likely to fire off some rounds at a time when it's really not called for. Yes. Anyways, uh, next we have an update to a story that has already worn out its welcome. I mean, this story is so old that it happened all the way back in February, aka last week. Oh, yeah. The Willy Wonka experience has an update. (laughs) Did somebody say Willy Wonka experience? Sorry, Willie McDuff. Yeah. And yes, if for some reason you happen to miss our most recent episode of Weekly Weird News, do yourself a favor and go watch it because we did a big reenactment of the event with props and everything, yeah. including a scene that was actually cut from the live experience. They're calling it the greatest episode of our show or any YouTube show ever. ever. Mm-hmm. Honestly, our version will never be topped, but at least one production never company... never be topped. At least one production company is going to try... Because a horror movie based on the unknown from the Glasgow Willy, Willy Wonka experience has been announced by a Scotland-based film company Authentic, yeah. called Caledonia Pictures. And at least, at the very least, it's a Scottish company making it. It's their heritage. Yeah. It is their right to tell this story. And I am proud of them for that. Yeah. It's their culture. Yeah. It's not a costume. I'm, in fact, I'm taking this off. That's very disrespectful. I'm appropriating like. Scottish culture. Here's more from Blo- uh, Bloody Disgusting. It seems that character, which terrified children at the aforementioned event and quickly became an ironic fan favorite online... And gay icon. ...is the inspiration for this upcoming horror movie. Caledonia Pictures previews the film, gearing up for production and a late 2024 release, follows a renowned illustrator and his wife who are haunted by the tragic death of their son, Charlie. 
Desperate to escape their grief, the couple leave the world behind for the remote Scottish Highlands, where an unknowable evil awaits them. Oh, it's an origin story. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I wonder if it's got any songs. It, it kind of reminds me of the, like, the fourth or fifth subplot of the most recent Fargo episode, uh, series. Uh, Munch. This could oh, be yeah, Munch's yeah. backstory. Yeah. Yeah. He was a bit of an unknown. That's right. The company tells Bloody Disgusting, We are excited to begin production and look forward to sharing more with you as soon as possible. We are actually only a few miles from the event, so it is quite surreal to see Glasgow all over social media worldwide. The Unknown is aiming for release in late 2024. I mean, this is pretty quick. Yeah, go like, in with very low expectations if they, you go in. I, I dare say there is no script. Well, someone uh, wrote a log line for this, or, you know. They're not going to let the robot do the work. I mean. It would be canonical to have yeah, the AI write the entire AI, script for this. So. But yeah, this is very, uh, you're striking while the iron's hot, and by the time this comes out, will anyone care? I would say, as a charitable venture, they should absolutely hire the people that were involved, well, most of them, the people, uh, the, the, the person who played the unknown and the Oompa Loompas, yeah. the, those people, maybe not Willie McDuff, but those people should get jobs yeah. in this production. Maybe not as the unknown or as Oompa Loompas, but, you know, some speaking role. Get yeah. them paid. One yeah. of the Oompa Loompas is on Cameo right now, and that can't last very long. Put them in the unknown movie at the very least. You're a Scottish production company. You say you're like a mile from the event. It can't be that hard. Yeah. Get them in there that's, in the production. That's the right thing to do. They are. They you still know. haven't been paid, and you are now trying to capitalize. Yeah, and on, they are actors. Yeah, they so, are. So, balls in your court. Honestly, we should be pressuring this production company to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, don't expect much. Yeah. And by the time it comes out, people may have just forgotten about all this. It's really just a blip on the timeline. We mm -hmm. all had a good laugh, but come on. It'll be in the year end <laughs> video as something that happened, but. Uh, so yeah. yeah, who knows how far this will spread, but. Hire the Oompa Loompas and the, the yeah. Unknown. Yeah. Next up, though, a tech story, but one that couldn't wait until Tech News Day, because if you are still on Twitter, there are some steps that you need to take right now in order to protect your privacy and security, thanks to Musk's company turning on audio and video calling by default and allowing just anyone, just anyone to go ahead and contact you in the most annoying way possible. I've seen, like, uh, some streamers have been using it, like, calling like each other in the middle of streams and they're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who's calling me on Twitter? What the fuck? I didn't know, how did you do that? Well, aside from being able to just call people on Twitter, it also provides both parties with each other's IP address. Yeah, it seems unnecessary. Yeah. So cool stuff, Mr. Musk, thanks a lot. What a great feature. In its own community note post to a tweet promoting the new feature, someone added, by default, Calls are enabled, and every call reveals both users' IP addresses to each other. Users who wish to keep their IPs private must change their privacy settings. And here's how you can do just that. And instead of worrying about any of it, just shut the whole thing off. Yeah. Go to your direct messages tab, click on the settings icon, find the enable audio and video calling part, and turn it the fuck off. You are welcome. Besides, who is going to use this besides scammers? Soon it will be pussy on the line. Pussy in bio and on the phone. Pick it up. Pussy calling. <laughs> Pussy call. Uh, yeah, this one I was... Tell me your government secrets, please. I saw this and I went into my settings to turn it off and none of the options were there. I was like, oh yeah, I turned off updates for my app like six months ago. Yeah. So there's still time. You can still prevent future uh, incidences of this by mm -hmm. just turning off the updates. <laughs> yeah. Eventually the app will stop working and that's when you just move on with your life. That's fine. Yes. I'm waiting for it. It's coming. Yes. I'm kind of shocked the app still works, though it barely does. It's like a person who finally gets closure because their dead relative's voicemail accidentally got deleted on their phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like that. It's exactly like that and no different. But speaking of that, I'm not even sure we can show the image because of how ridiculously um, voluptuous this creation is. But there is what appears to be a significant honey trap happening on Twitter <laughs> right now because some AI created monstrosity is claiming to be in the military and in serious need of a husband right now. I need husband. I am UK and US citizen and I need husband now. Uh, so I think if I just censor the gigantic ass, yeah. I can show some of it, but yeah. it, as you're probably aware, that is not a real person. 
Those proportions don't make sense. <laughs> Much like a Rob Liefeld drawing, you've got to, someone needs to draw a skeleton to yeah. show what's happening underneath. Yeah, people are like, uh, it looks like a minotaur. Yeah, so uh, this is an account that is set up to do, it, do it's something. doing yeah, something. Yeah. It's, it's up to something. And it appears to just be a way to farm engagement and push more ads. But it's also a good peek into how gullible horny old dudes are. They're not all in the military, but they're, they're, all they're everywhere. Because, yeah, people are replying to these photos and other tweets from the account like they are getting their one shot at marrying this fine young cadet with the incredible proportions. Yes. On a separate but equally deranged side of Twitter, though, is this guy, who's also clearly doing some engagement farming because surely there is no one this insane. In one thread, they posted, It is well known in ancient literature that the clitoris didn't exist. What the clitoris is, is an invention of modern feminism, which has been trying to give women their own penis and socially engineering them into believing they need to have a clitoral orgasm. All a lie. And further, <laughs> <laughs> further down, the poster wrote, clitoral deniers are treated worse than Holocaust deniers in our culture because the clitoris is essentially the Holocaust of feminism. There are so many layers to this. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, so this person's an incel. And then you get to the end, they're like, oh, they're also a Nazi. Yeah. They're saying this, uh, they're, they're referring to the Holocaust in this context because um, yeah. they don't believe it happened. Mm -hmm. But they wish it did. I, I don't know. When I saw this, I literally felt like that comic where like it's like the crudely drawn stick guy with the glasses. And it's just like, hey, how are you doing? And then you see something and it goes, yeah. Yeah. It's just, I can't believe some of the shit I see on Twitter these days. What yeah. a platform. What a platform. Anyways, uh, on to the final story. For the unaware, Donner Pass is shockingly, surprisingly named after the Donner Party. Oh, a party. Which was a group of pioneers who were traveling to California and got stuck at a snowstorm and uh, unfortunately turned to cannibalism to survive. Oh, yeah, that's bad. So. You would assume that people these days might consider avoiding that area during a snowstorm out of fear that they might suffer the same fate. Especially when we have meteorologists who alert the public days before severe weather strikes. Hey, you know that part of the state that could literally kill you if you're there during the snowstorm, which is uh, predicted to have, I don't know, 10, 15 feet of snow? That could be you buried under that. Probably avoid it. Maybe going to Lake Tahoe, Tahoe right now. Lake Tahoe yeah. sounds good. Lake, Lake Tahoe, Tahoe delicious. Not, not sounding good. Nevertheless, some people persisted, and they did absolutely get stuck in Donner Pass. Though so far we haven't heard any reports of people eating one another. I'm just imagining like you're in your car for a few hours, and you look over to the driver next to you, and it's like it's like in a Looney Tune where they turn into a, they, a turkey they, leg. <laughs> <laughs> just like a Christmas goose with their head sticking out of it. Mm. Just a rotating Looking rotisserie, rotisserie chicken. Just. <laughs> it's only been three hours, but boy, am I hungry. Ooh, I'm so sick of eating ice. Uh, NBC News reported that dozens of people were stranded in their cars on California's Interstate 80 as the biggest snowstorm of the season battered the northern part of the state and Nevada. Drivers waited for hours for traffic to begin moving at Donner Summit as conditions worsened. Uh, I hope they're doing okay. Um, hope not too many people have been eaten. Since this uh, all went down, there's uh, it's been years since I read it, but uh, there's a pretty harrowing book of, uh, with a couple firsthand accounts of this called "The Indifferent Stars Above." That's what it is, and it's literally like you're reading from like the beginning all the way to them eating each other through the eyes of I believe it's the young girl, uh, just like my family's going on a trip to California. Yeah. Well, that escalated. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the the Oregon Trail and the the California Trail, um, heroin, real wild shit. I I mean, people had some idea of what they were getting into, but you look at it just even looking at it just on a map. Just gonna head west. You're like, you did that with like a fucking ox and uh, just a little cart behind it. Yeah, you take one wrong turn, you're uh, you're facing some mountains that you absolutely yeah. cannot and should like, not climb. The Rocky Mountains are <laughs> that is that is an obstacle. Yeah. Wild. You're just gonna you're just gonna weave through that. Yeah, why not? We'll figure it out. Crazy. Anyways, uh, if again, if you haven't already, please watch Weekly Weird News uh, and, and make sure you like the video. Click the like button. There you go. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. Subscribe to the channel. We hit 280. 
thousand. Oh, Dave, I love when you tell me about all the channels you've subscribed to. Tell me more about the internet today. Dave, I love you so much when you like their videos. Please, Dave, tell me more, my little my secret, secret agent. agent. <laughs> sweet Dave. Oh, sweet Dave. Like the video. Sweet Dave. <laughs> uh, click the other videos over here. One of them is Weekly Weird News. Another one is about uh, Elon Musk's toxic tunnels. And that's not about his butthole. I'm sure that's toxic as well. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.